No problem. Um, okay, so I'm very pleased to introduce uh, three of our speakers that we have today from Thailand. Um, Dean Patanasak Mongolwat, Dean Wachara Ryu Pai Boon, and Dr. Isavara Siri Rungguang. Um, uh, Dean Pat, who will be speaking first, um, works together with um, our very own Dr. J.R. Rizzo here at CUSP and part of the NYU Medical School, along with uh, Dr. Vedan Vedanthan's group at NYU Langone. Um, they have an NIH grant together focused on accessibility for blind and low vision students in Thailand. Um, and they are extending their work in Thailand from work that's been done here in New York City with Dr. Rizzo on the Vision Project, which is an AI edge computing and navigational platform for the visually impaired um, to help navigate to and from previously mapped locations. And this platform has been created and evaluated in New York City. And now this group is trying to put this technology to work in Thailand and deal with the new challenges that that are that one one is faced when when trying to transfer the technology over into a new environment. And so we'll be hearing more about that work today. Um, um, Dean Pat is a faculty of ICT at Mahito University, Thailand. He was previously at Northwestern University here in the US, part of the Feinberg School of Medicine. He was a research professor of radiology there. Um, he's board, board certified from the American Board of Imaging Informatics, and he's a scientific reviewer for RSNA Radiographics and Artificial Intelligence, as well as the SIIM Journal of Digital Imaging. Um, he uh, has been a funded subject matter expert for the US NIH's NCI's Biomedical Informatics Grid in Vivo Imaging Workspace, and he received the NCI's CABIG Outstanding Achievement Award. His current research focuses on medical informatics and imaging, machine and deep learning for medical images, robot and Internet of Things for, senior healthy, for the senior healthy living, applying simulation and gaming technology in healthcare, health data collection for big data, mapping NCI's AIM to DICOM SR, and assistive technology for disabled persons. And Dean Wachara Ryupai Boon is a lecturer of the Master and PhD programs on quality of life de development of persons with disabilities at Rachu Sudai College, Mahio University, Thailand. She is a physiatrist in background and her research areas are in human functioning, social inclusion, and quality of life and rehabilitation. And Dr. Isavara Siri Rungguang is a lecturer in the PhD program on quality of life development of persons with disabilities at Shusuda College, Mahido University. She teaches a course on disability and accessibility. Her research interests are in related to accessibility, participation and inclusion of persons with disabilities. She's on the steering committee of the Thailand Association of the Blind, which is the national organization of persons with visual impairment. And she is president of the Thai Graduate Society of the Blind. So with that, I will hand it off to these three amazing speakers to tell, them, tell us about more of this work that they're doing. Thank you very much, Jackie, uh, for your uh, wonderful uh, introductions uh, for three of us. Uh, it's an honor for all of us to be here and then uh, to be uh, able to uh, give uh, perspectives, you know, from the Thailand side with the uh, vision uh, technology from NYU. We really appreciate, you know, this uh, joint collaboration between NYU and Mahidon University very much. So uh, with that being said, you know, the objective is uh, to apply the vision, you know, uh, for the Thai visually impaired persons and uh, the thing, as you know, we're going to have to adapt, you know, to the local needs. So how are we going to do this? You know, uh, Dean Bachara and uh, uh, her teams, okay, going to help us, you know, to uh, identify and we're going to do a custom feature and applications. Uh, after today, you know, the talk, I, I hope that you uh, understand a little bit more about uh, uh, local infrastructure in Thailand and uh, uh, looking for your feedback, you know, for uh, customizations on this. So today uh, topics, okay, as uh, 
uh, Jackie already uh, told you guys, you know, we're going to use the edge uh, computing uh, with the cloud computing platform that are provided by the vision uh, projects. Okay. Uh, today focus is going to be on the health and well-being of the uh, VI persons, right? Fairness and inclusivity for the education perspective. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, disaster resilience and a model infrastructure, okay, modern infrastructure. So uh, next thing, uh, Dean Vachara, is, she's going to be talking about the health and well-being of the visually impaired person. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and uh, you may share your screen. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Pat. Let me share my slide. Is that true? That's good. Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to start with the global picture of the per person with visual impairment. I mean, globally, it was estimated that about two point two billion people in the world living with visual impairment, and among these, it was estimated that thirty six million are blind and 217 million have moderate to severe visual impairment, meaning we can call uh, people with low vision. And it was also estimated that uh, it will be doubling over the next 30 years if you don't do anything in order to improve their function or overcome the barrier that they have. And in turn, it might be created the economic burden is estimated around 3 trillion globally. And Okay, sorry. And did come back to the very local like Thailand, which have population about 70 million. There are about uh, 2 million people living with disability, any kind of disability. This is uh, as of December, 2021. It's around 3% uh, of Thai population who living with disability. And for specifically, Person with visual impairment is around um, 187,000 living with visual impairment. In terms of um, living, I mean, in, in, in Thailand, if we think that the average income at uh, 2021 is about um, people earn for living about 700 um, US dollar a month, it is only about two, uh, 23,000 that um, in Bart. And for a particular uh, area like uh, Bangkok Metropolitan, if, it, if general people, they can earn around uh, 1,000 US dollar a month, it's around uh, 40,000 40, baht a month. But for Thai visually impaired persons, they might earn only about 9,000 9, a month. They're very, very, uh, wide gap of income for people with living with uh, visual impairment in Thailand. Um, if, we, if we think about uh, distribution of Thai disability in, in, in among 2 million people, uh, moving, moving or uh, mobility disability is the most common type of disability in Thailand and followed by the hearing and communication disability around 20%. And for seeing disability, it takes around 10%. And followed by mental and behavioral disability, intellectual disability, autism, and learning disability. This means in Thailand, we have uh, the law that uh, determine people living with legally disability in, in only 75, uh, seven, in only seven types of disability. And for the geographic distribution, most of people with disability living in the Northeast region is about 40% and about 20% living in the North and 20% in Central and about 12% living in the South of Thailand. And for Bangkok Metropolitan, it's very, very central of the Thailand. Uh, we have about 4.5% uh, uh, of people, people with disability living there. If you can uh, concentrate on the specific age group, 
most of people with disability is about 55% ish, six years and over. This means that if we uh, growing up in, in the aging of the population, it might be increased in, in number of people with disability in, in Thailand. Uh, for the distribution across the type of disability is another picture for the all, I mean, all age population. Focusing on the working age group is um, only, uh, is about uh, 855, 100, uh, I mean, uh, in, the age, in the working age, uh, I mean, age 15 to 59 years of age. Among these, only 315,000 have worked, but only 52,000 very severe, disabled and unable to work. But very important, I mean, more important, about 100,000 who have, I mean, disability, but able to work, but can have no occupation. This means if we think about the earning for living uh, for about 10,000 baht a month for a year, we, we, we lost the opportunity to having income of the people about 12, 12 billion a year. Uh, among those who have work, we can, we can see that what kind of work that they work, mostly working in the agriculture sector and about, um, I mean, 50% work in agriculture uh, sector, and about 20% work in the in, informal labor sector. That means very, very few, about 10% that work in the, I mean, formal sector. That, that means that they have no security on the job opportunity. Regarding, and not to less, we have the law that have the disability support employment we have the quota system for people with disability. Every enterprise that have employee about, employee 100, they have to hire people with disability, with disability one, one, one person. And uh, we can look at the, uh, I mean, the, the root cause, why they have very low opportunity for work is maybe come, um, come from the, the loss of opportunity in education before they growing up to, to be adult. Uh, this picture showed that uh, most of people with disability have the education only at primary education level, about 80%. And about 11%, they have secondary education level. That means they, they lost opportunity in education since they're very, very young I mean, in children. And when they, they grow up, they lost the opportunity to work as well. Um, if we don't, if we want to understand why they lost opportunity or have very really less opportunity, we have to look at the, the be, very basic uh, of difficulties that they have. Uh, for example, people with visual impairment, they have seeing difficulties that have created the functional consequences like uh, uh, they have the, I, I mean, we can divide up the functional consequences into type the optical related and non-optical related function. For optical related function, it include reading, writing, performing near tasks or communication to other people. For non-optical, it involves in the independent mobility in uh, performing activity of daily living, for in traveling, in engaging in, the, in, in public spaces. If you would like to improve their functional level, we have to make them access to the public service for functional training, like orientation and mobility training. As well, they have to, my, my need for the assist device, like uh, the uh, adaptive mobility device. And as well, we have to create the policy to adjust the environment in order to be accessible for all, especially to people with disability and, and visual impairment. Uh, as a result, if we think about the health impact and opportunity loss, uh, in overall, we, we can see in many literature that uh, say, say that 
people with disability have a, a rather low quality of life in compared to the general population. They might have a risk, I mean, more risk in unintentional injuries that make them fear for moving around or outgoing. And also it, it creates their sedentary lifestyle, isolation, disconnecting, and might be loneliness and even have depressed in, in mood. And this is cause of the lack of the opportunity in education, working, and also access to public service. Um, when, when talking about the well-being or quality of life, uh, for better understanding, we might look at the very basic concept of quality of life of the WHO, the divided into the five, um, six dimension. We can understand the first and second dimension that concern about physical health and psychological health. But for level of independence, social relation, and environment dimension, not so many people think about that. And that means the, 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 uh, determine the functional health of the people. Uh, the functional health means that the ability of people to perform activity and to participate in any area of life that they would like to. And that is the importance of the environment in order to make them able to participate as well. Um, in this term, we can say that uh, for people with disability, not only the biological that determine their quality of life, but also the social determinants that can be categorized into five categories. Uh, it's about the health care access and quality. That means health insurance coverage, access to primary health care, and also the health literacy of the people. And for education access and quality, it devoted to the early childhood development and education, language and literacy, high school graduation or enrollment in the higher education. And the third one is about the economic stability. That means the ability to, to, do, to perform the income generating opportunity or employment, to access to food and nutrition and house stability. For social and relationship, it means that the community participation cohesion or either discrimination in particular, particular facility like a hospital, school, workplace. And the last one is the neighborhoods and built environment. Uh, it, might, it must be safe and equally access. In this regard, if we would like to um, make people with disability, uh, I mean, have the better quality of life or equal quality of life, we have to make them uh, have equal opportunity. Uh, that means that they have to be able to full and effective participation in, in the society. To achieve that, we have to make, uh, make them uh, achieve the accessible in all area. And the, basically we have to uh, allow them to access to the cap capability development and uh, able to deliberate their capacity in order to enjoy their life. So for this, we, we have to think that how and who to make this happen into the real life. So I, I would like to bring back to Dr. Pat in order to go on. Thank you. All right. Uh, so basically, you know, we, we are looking uh, to use the vision projects, you know, to help the improve the functionality and uh, throughout uh, through the skill uh, training, you know, and uh, binding. So we hope that, you know, the, the result is going to be better than these studies, you know, to improve uh, his, uh, psychosocial uh, interventions, you know, and uh, we really wish that uh, you know the result is going to be much better than 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 they they found in these uh, 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 research. Okay, and uh, the other thing is that uh, you know uh, we're gonna look in, into a different age uh, range. You know from the uh, Rajasudha College, which has uh, quite a bit of a younger generation. You know, but as you know that the working age, you know, can go up to uh, in 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 the sixties, right? So uh, that that that's what we are going to try in the maybe a third or fourth year. So and uh, by uh, doing that, you know, we hope to improve you know their mental health issue 
Okay. Uh, the next thing is that uh, I would like to uh, <clears throat> uh, let uh, Dr. Isavara, you know, talking about the fairness and inclusivity, you know, focusing on the education. Okay. Uh, Dr. Isavara, uh, could you please go ahead? I already stopped sharing. Uh, can you, okay, uh, we start seeing your screen now. Okay, can, can you hear me? Yes. Right, okay. So uh, since we already talk about, uh, listen to what uh, Dr. Dean Vachara and uh, Dean Pat already talk about person with visual impairment, then I think we need to, uh, sorry, hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Right, I have difficulty with my my laptop. Okay. Yeah, so I think we uh, the first thing the, we need to start from the uh, education, like, you know, when, when we talk about inclusivity or fairness, uh, equity, but let me talk about what is inclusion, but uh, inclusion when we talk about in the past person with visual impairment normally go to like special school for the blind, right, but uh, recently as like uh, the United Nations Conventions on the Right of Person with Disability, as well as the Sustainable Development Goal that we uh, aim for quality education for everyone. So everybody has the right to uh, participate, to be uh, included in the uh, mainstream education. But, you know, to be included is to be present in the same environment as other people, but not only present, you have to be able to participate in any activity that is, uh, you know, happen in that certain environment, like in this case is the school. And also uh, the, once you're already in the education achievement is very important because like, uh, as you already seen the number of a uh, person this uh, person with disabilities that like, you know they graduate only in primary level right and then the sec uh, at the secondary level the number uh, dramatically decrease the, that you know because like you know uh, if they uh, they drop out along the way so uh, due to that maybe because they cannot achieve in the education so that's you know they just ask why are we have to study if we cannot achieve anything like uh, so that's just drop out and may stay at home or you know do other thing else <laughs> right then uh, the most important thing to make it happen that you know a person with disability uh, in this case person with visual impairment be able to participate and achieve in the education is that uh as uh, we have uh, what we call special educational needs that, you know, a uh, person has uh, limited, uh, like visual impairment, we have limitation seeing, right? So uh, if the education does not make, uh, you know, provide any accommodation or to uh, make any uh, your class or materials uh, or uh, activities, uh, anything in the school that uh, to be uh, accessible for a student with visual impairment, then it will be difficult for them to have the uh, level, the playing field, you know, to, to be able to participate or to achieve just like other students. So this is very important that, you know, a person have to understand that, uh, okay, you are visually impaired and then that we have particular needs that has to be met in order to uh, uh, like you know to, either you make it universal design like you know from the beginning you try to uh, decide anything to be uh, able to re, uh, for many as many people as possible to be able to uh, use or to uh, either products or service but if in, it's impossible that a particular person cannot use uh, whatever you try to decide universally in the beginning, then you have to make it uh, uh, accommodation to be you know, reasonable to serve the special educational needs of that particular person so that they uh, have the 
uh, equity, you know, equal, uh, have equal opportunity to be able to participate and achieve in education. So who are the stakeholders to, to do this? Uh, that, so, well, uh, I talk about this in, in education, you know, sector. So particularly maybe in school or in higher education, you will have like, you know, of course it has to come down from the policy, from the administrator. And then you have teachers or lecturers that, you know, uh, maybe like a frontline person that uh, meet or teach or lecture in the class that meet the students. Then uh, these are uh, the important groups of people as well. And also uh, for small children, like, you know, parents that have to work together with the school in order to, uh, you know, continually, like, you know, make a seamless uh, development from home and school and school and home. And also the peers, like, you know, peers in class, like classmates like that, you know, uh, the sighted classmate or uh, not a person, a uh, classmate without disability, you are also the important part to make uh, the environment to be inclusive for uh, everyone or for a person with visual impairment or person with disability as well. And also the community. So it's mean like, you know, everyone in that environment, either in school, in higher education, like university, like, you know, everyone is, uh, is important stakeholders to make all this happen. So because like, you know, inclusion, we, uh, we we uh, celebrate the diversity of people, like people come from different backgrounds and people have uh, different or diverse, uh, you know, talents or limitations or uh, any uh, characteristic that are different. So, so it is a, a good thing to celebrate the diversity. And then you have to see a person as a person uh, that, you know, that they have a dignity as a human. Either they are person with or without disability. So we are just the same human being. So it has to be, uh, uh, we have to be, uh, able to, you know, be considered as the equal person as well. And also the last thing that is very important is that, you know, uh, inclusion is not just one uh, one thing of that, okay, we get person or student with disability in our school or in our university already, and then uh, we try to accommodate them for uh, to be able for them to participate in activity or uh, anything, but you know, it's not just finished like that, but it's an ongoing process, you know, because everything keeps changing. So uh, the, this inclusion is a process that you always have to keep uh, your uh, eye on and, and continue to, you know, improve or continue to adapt it to the situation. So it's an ongoing process that uh, please keep in mind for that. So, you know, at, as uh, education, uh, you know, it's not just only in school or in the classroom, you know, uh, we have like primary, secondary, and then higher education. And also we have like, you know, education outside the classroom and, you know, into the community and society at last, at, at large. So, so it's like, you know, it's very important that we start in school and then, you know, cover or continue it uh, from to, uh, you know, all the aspect of our life and then, you know, into the uh, main society or in the large society that, in, you know, uh, from education, you can apply these uh, concepts into, uh, you know, your everyday life in, in, in anything that uh, Dr. Pat will uh, continue to tell you what, that what uh, you can uh, apply this concept to, to uh, in uh, in for uh, for your everyday uh, life, uh, also it's over to you, uh, Dean Pat. Thank uh, thank you. I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, okay. So uh, since we are going to use the vision uh, projects, right, which is the uh, AI computing. A mobile unit that uh, disabled persons, uh, visually impaired person can carry with him or her. Uh, so they're gonna have to use it as a part of their life. So what what is the most important thing here? You know, because since this one is gonna be communicating to the crowd, you know, basically 
there's a bunch of uh, uh, services that are available on the cloud. Uh, the fundamental uh, communication method is going to be the cellular. As you know that in Thailand in 2011, uh, they have a big uh, flood, you know, and at the time, uh, we have about uh, 69 million uh, subscribers, but that was the 2G, uh, 2G and 3G communication. As you can see on this uh, slide, if you see my uh, mouse movement here, you know, the recovery and reconstruction, you know, uh, at the beginning, you know, it took about six months, it cost over 1.6 billion, you know, and within uh, six to 24 months is additional monies, you know, and after two years, you know, so basically uh, the cellular companies, you know, they lost about uh, uh, 636 million in, in income. And at the time uh, we, we, we start to use a smartphone, right? So uh, nowadays, uh, we already have uh, 5G infrastructures uh, implemented or installed uh, in Thailand and hopefully, you know, 6G in the next, uh, hopefully in the next five to 10 years. Okay. In 2020, we have over 120 million subscribers, even though we have about 70 million people uh, in Thailand. So what that means is, uh, you know, one person has uh, more than one number. And what I like to show you here is that uh, the communication is uh, the fundamental connection between the end device, the edge device to the cloud service. AIS, you know, is uh, I think that is the biggest uh, provider. Now they are able to provide a 5G, which cover, I would say, you know, over 80% of the, the areas. You know, uh, there are some area that, you, as you can see here, you know, that's, uh, uh, area that does not have any cellular coverage, you know, if they don't have a cellular coverage, I can guarantee to you that most likely they will not have internet or Wi-Fi coverage, okay? So, uh, DTAC, this is uh, a, a European companies, you know, they, they are the weakest uh, uh, among uh, the service provider in Thailand, you know. Uh, the other one is True. True is probably cover about what I, I would say about 70%. So, but uh, they have a very strong presence on the internet, you know, basically they have a fiber that run to uh, our homes. Okay, so uh, as far as the communication with the edge device, we are using home Wi-Fi. We also have a quite a bit of a Wi-Fi hotspot. So AS and True can provide that kind of stuff, uh, that kind of internet connectivity uh, for us. The only thing that I'm concerned about the experience here, you know, since I moved back for about six years already, the auto connection, you know, with all these Wi-Fi hotspot is not, is not that automatic, you know. Sometimes you have to enter username and passwords again. That is very, very uh, burdensome, you know, even uh, for uh, able persons, you know. So we're gonna have to find a solutions, you know, to make sure and work with the Wi-Fi, uh, the, the, the telcos company, you know, to make sure that that thing is gonna work. And, you know, uh, Wi-Fi 6 is coming. So uh, actually it's already been deployed quite, quite a bit. So uh, I think uh, the level of communication is gonna be uh, very good in Thailand. The next thing that I would like to mention, you know, all these edge device consume a lot of power. And in order, for this device, the vision for projects, you know, to be able to work in Thailand, you know, the person must carry all these things, you know, in the next, uh, I would say eight to 10 hours, you know, otherwise, you know, it's, it's not gonna be you that, that, that useful for them, you know, you can bring them from home to school, but how can they use it? Uh, how can they use the same device, you know, to bring it back uh, uh, to their home, okay? So uh, now, uh, in Bangkok, at least, okay, we start changing uh, the bus station and in bus station, you know, you can charge this Wi-Fi uh, 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 or um, <clears throat> these uh, edge computing devices, okay. However, it's not still, you know, as you can see, you know, the symbol is uh, for the uh, regular people to see, but for the visually impaired persons, you know, we're going to have to work on that as well. So the other thing, you know, the charging methods, you know, electrical socket, we're gonna have to design our uh, uh, H device, you know, to be able to do that. Or additional battery packs, you know, we are thinking about uh, experimenting on the on the solar cell, you know, put on the backpack because Thailand is quite uh, uh, sunny, you know, but 
we, we, we shall see about this, you know, charging uh, methods, okay? So uh, the next section I would like to talk about, you know, the modern infrastructures. Uh, I'm gonna compare it with uh, the one in the state as well as uh, uh, here in Thailand, you know. For the Ministry of Interior, you know, we have uh, regulations that uh, helping uh, uh, or at least mandate, you know, the facility in Thailand must meet the needs of the disabled persons, you know. It started from uh, 2005, as you can see here, you know, facil uh, facility side, you know, ramp, elevators, and so on, okay. You know, must be uh, av make available, make it easily accessible for disabled persons. In uh, and in 2011, you know, they came out with uh, another regulation for the uh, communication service, right? Communic all these communication services, you know, that gonna enable assistive technologies, okay, uh, for uh, disability uh, uh, people, okay, uh, disabled persons. And uh, they have an update in uh, from uh, 2005, you know, in 2021. Uh, I know that you cannot read this uh, regulation because it is in Thai, but I just want to show you the concept. This is uh, uh, 1.3 centimeters, you know. Uh, what I'm trying to see, uh, to show to you here is that, you know, our regulation is somewhat, you know, not that comprehensive as compared to the world standard, you know. This one also is talking about, you know, this uh, 100, uh, 1.5 meters, you know, but the detail in here, when you compare to, for example, you know, the ISO standard, which you can get detailed information, right? That this one, uh, it's gonna be able to use it as a guideline for people, for example, if they want to do the car parking, you know, they go to this section, the information inside there is much more comprehensive. And in my opinions, you know, is uh, implementable. Okay, uh, for, for, for the Thai regulation, it's just uh, more like a general concepts, okay? And uh, others, you know, assistive product. Uh, we do not have uh, these uh, kind of regulations uh, in Thailand yet, you know, but hopefully, you know, in time, we're gonna have these sort of things, you know? One thing uh, uh, for these, uh, liquor, uh, for these uh, standards, you know, you got, of course, you have to pay for it. Okay, for example, this is Australia, you know, design and access for mobilities, you know. Uh, this one, you know, for Australia dollar is about what, 200 uh, Australia dollars. So, but for the Thai people, you know, if they have a business, they can uh, purchase this uh, uh, service, you know. So uh, the thing that we would like uh, to focus on the vision uh, project is uh, uh, to map, you know, our target locations and uh, map all the uh, walking path uh, between locations. You know, the first thing, the first building that we would like to uh, uh, do is uh, La Chasuda College, which is uh, a college for uh, disability persons, you know, and then this is the faculty of ICT. We have a lot of uh, latest uh, generation for the computer, uh, computing equipments, you know. Uh, the next place is the uh, Prince Mahidon Hall, which is a concert hall. You know, it's, it's iconic for the Mahidon University. We would like uh, all these uh, disabled persons, especially the visually impaired persons, you know, to be able to mingle with other students. You know, this Mahidon Learning Center is where, the, you know, all the students will be able to participate in many activities, you know. And uh, some of the disabled, uh, visually impaired persons, you know, they need to go to a graduate college, use the library. And at last but not least, okay, we would like them to be able to access park. The park area is uh, this area. Uh, if you follow my uh, pointer, it's a very nice area that uh, they can exercise and they can walk inside the park uh, quite safe, you know. Mm, this is an example of a Rajasudha College is here. And this white uh, uh, area here is basically, actually this is like eight lane uh, highways, you know. Uh, visually impaired persons must be able to cross, you know, uh, the crossover and then, you know, come on to uh, the main campus, okay? So that's what we are going to be uh, 
working on. This is uh, in front of a large Sudar building. You know, this is ICT, the faculty of ICT. You know, we're gonna be uh, using uh, the technology that provided by uh, Professor JR, okay, uh, to map uh, each floor. As you can see, we have architecture drawing and we have all the dimensions, you know, and right now we are uh, start planning, you know, to use uh, the GoPro 360, you know, to map every single floor, including inside the classroom as well as all the bathroom, you know, so that we have all this information for the visually impaired person to be able to navigate, you know, from the point that they are standing to another point safely, you know, that they wish to go. So this is what we've been doing. And then we also, you know, uh, did uh, have done some of the uh, uh, compass, you know, to, make, uh, to use all these data to ensure that the data that we got from the GroPro 360, you know, is correct. And then uh, uh, this cover technology is gonna be much, much different than uh, using the Wi-Fi hotspot, you know. I know that, for example, Cisco, you know, they have this Wi-Fi hotspot, but I believe that this vision technology, you know, when they map the entire floor, the, the level of granularity is much, much better than, than, than the Wi-Fi hotspot, okay? Uh, so uh, we're gonna provide uh, the, the NYU team, you know, with the picture and the measurements, you know, of each room, you know, uh, so that uh, they know what's going on uh, with the GoPro C60, okay? Uh, as for the outside uh, area, because, you know, we, we can map the building, you know, the, uh, a visually impaired person can travel from one spot to another, but however, you know, uh, they need to go from one building to another. So we're gonna measure all the distance as well, okay? This is just a figure of the graduate college. This is uh, Prince Mahidon Hall. I wish that any one of you uh, would like to visit Mahidon. You know, we love to show you this, uh, uh, this building, you know, it's very nice. And this is uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the nature park, okay, within the Mahidon uh, University. And this is uh, the library, okay? So the next thing, you know, uh, I would like to uh, show you about the uh, pedestrian walkway. Uh, this is, uh, we wish that all the walkways is gonna be looking like this, you know, in Thailand. Unfortunately, you know, we have a lot of problems. So we're gonna have to use a computer vision, okay, to uh, solve uh, this kind of problem. So we're gonna have to take quite a bit of pictures, you know, to train the AI so that the AI would know. As you can see here, you know, it's about uh, 86 centimeters, you know. Uh, this one is a, 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 it's a crossway, you know, that uh, uh, people can use to cross the street, right? So, but, you know, this area is quite small. Or sometimes you see the pole here, you know, this one is about 1.5 meters, but, you know, if, if you navigate it and then, you know, the, this edge computing unit cannot compute fast enough, you know, we are afraid that, you know, uh, visually impaired person will have difficulty uh, navigating even with the white cane. As you can see, you know, the surface here, uh, this is a public area, you know, but it's different in a, in the state, right? If you own this piece of properties, uh, you also responsible for this area. But in Thailand, no, this is, this is the metropolitan Bangkok, you know, responsibility uh, to uh, upkeep all these uh, infrastructure. But as you can see, you know, Many, many places is gonna give a uh, visually impaired person problem when they're traveling. And this one, as you can see, they try to put a, a light pole here, you know, but they just left it there for some reason, they're not finished it, you know. And sometimes as you can see here, you know, branches and leaf, you know, uh, it's just pointing there. And if we don't have any real time response back, you know, uh, you see scaffolding here, the boot here, this one, you know, when I ran in the morning and then I found this, so I, I, I stopped and, you know, take some, uh, took a pictures and, you know, just to, to show that uh, we, we need to encounter these car kind of problems, okay? Uh, landmark area. And as you can see here, you know, uh, from the, this bell box, you know, and from the, this uh, seating area is like 1.5 meters. If the, the, the HAI unit cannot compute fast enough, you know, 
And even though we, you know, I think a visually impaired person, once they, 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 they step on this piece of a block here, you know, they, they realize that, okay, well, this is the end of something, you know, but still uh, we would like uh, to be able to at least give them a few minutes, uh, I'm sorry, a few seconds, you know, warning, you know, from the system. And this is just uh, another uh, uh, sidewalk, you know, example uh, that, uh, you know, even a uh, person with the uh, perfect uh, visual, you know, still gonna have uh, some problem navigating it. Pedestrian crossing, as you can see, you know, we have a lot of motorbike and sometimes, you know, motorbike is gonna stay on the uh, crossing lanes you, here, you know, and uh, this is uh, some of uh, uh, pedestrian crossing. And as you can see here, this is an open uh, uh, suite, you know, there, because in Thailand, we have uh, quite a bit of uh, rain. So they need to have uh, somewhere that the rain can go. But if they, uh, if the visually impaired person walk through this, you know, and then they use the state, uh, the, the white cane, you know, and if they put it in here, this area, you know, so uh, our AI uh, visual uh, computer visions, you know, have to be able to uh, warn uh, them, you know. So uh, the other thing that we would like uh, to do in this project, you know, is uh, to come up with uh, accessibility index, you know, especially for Thailand. Uh, to make sure that the, the factor or perception of comfort, you know, it met uh, uh, international standards, okay? And uh, uh, we definitely can uh, believe that, you know, we can use a visual uh, a computer vision, you know, to fix uh, these car problems, you know. Uh, in this work, okay, they use over 300,000 images, you know, uh, to uh, train their AI system, you know, to recognize the curb, the sidewalk, and so forth. So, but that, you know, all these images is uh, from the states, you know, which uh, is quite different than uh, what, what we have is in Bangkok, you know, so we're going to have to take uh, quite a bit of picture uh, in order to make uh, our AI smarter, okay? Uh, the issue here is, you know, uh, we don't have enough uh, images, right? So we are talking with JR right now, you know, to create an app so that uh, hopefully, you know, we can use that app, you know, to take a picture and then uh, basically use a, a, a crowdsourcing, you know, to help us with this uh, kind of uh, uh, issues, you know. This is uh, some of the device, you know, that looking directly into the surface, you know, but uh, our, uh, pitch, uh, our camera is going to be at the shoulder level, you know. So when, when we take a picture, we have to take a picture at the, uh, at, at the shoulder level. And uh, at the same time, you know, uh, use these uh, edge computings uh, to uh, compute it fast enough to warn, you know, in, in, in real time, okay? So uh, I would like to mention a little bit about affordabilities, you know. Uh, this uh, solution is gonna cost about uh, 40,000. And this is with the, 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 the X server. Uh, uh, NVIDIA uh, computing units, okay? Uh, this is quite quite an issue because the 40,000 baht is, is, is quite a lot. You know, we're gonna have to find some uh, government subsidies uh, for this, okay? And right now we are building the prototype, okay? Uh, having this prototype, put it on the book bag, you know, and the real world uses, you know, within the next year or so, we, sh we, we should know how how durable this uh, this uh, device is going to be? You know, we try to pack everything in one. You know, if you drop it, it still works. Okay. Uh, ho hopefully, uh, we we will learn from our day-to-day uh, -day uses. Uh, Nvidia just announced the Orin. Okay, this one I think that it has a, a much better performance. You know, up to eight times performance as compared to previous version. Uh, we just order this uh, this device. Uh, Hopefully it's gonna be uh, on our campus in the next uh, few months, uh, you know, uh, because since it just uh, released it this, this, uh, the end of this month, okay? So uh, anyhow, uh, this device is even more expensive than, than the X7, okay? So what needs to be done here? So I think uh, the first thing that uh, Isavar, Dr. Isavara can, uh, can tell you is that uh, the real-time object uh, detections, you know, uh, we have to be able to recognize it almost instantly and as well as, you know, provide an advice, you know, a warning 
uh, what, uh, for the people that using this device, you know, because of the poor walking surface and all the uh, obstacles that uh, you saw it, you know. So uh, anyhow, uh, the other thing is that the car and motorcycle, you know, in here, even they have a traffic light, you know, but uh, they still gonna go through it if they see that the people are not uh, crossing the street, you know, so, and uh, our edge computing device have to recognize this. So we're gonna have to uh, take a lot of picture as well as a video, you know, to train uh, the system, you know, and hopefully we can create uh, all the micro service, you know, micro services necessary uh, for the Thai people, okay. And we really uh, thank you, uh, NYU, you know, to bring this technology and we are going to learn a lot uh, from these projects, you know, and hopefully we can have this device uh, uh, to help a locally uh, visually impaired Thai persons. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was such a fascinating lecture to learn more about this vision work in Thailand. Let me open it up to the audience for questions. People can either put their question in the chat if they don't feel comfortable saying it out loud, or you can just raise your hand and I'll call on you. And if I don't call on you because I don't see your hand, then just speak up and let me know that you're trying to say something. So let's see, do we have any hands raised here? Um, okay, well, let me start with a question. Um, so one of the things I'm very interested in is, so you're trying to transport this technology from New York City to Thailand, and it's been developed in New York City, um, which is a more well-structured environment. What are some of the like specific challenges that are different in Thailand that you don't have in New York City, whether it's infrastructure or social? Uh, in terms of infrastructure, you know, New York City, you know, the way that you decide the city is a block, right? In Thailand is, you know, let me give you some example. One street, you know, you drive it for a while, it changed the name of the street something like that, yeah. But on, on the Salaya campus that we're gonna uh, implement uh, this uh, vision uh, technology, okay. The, 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 it's very well designed, you know. I, I, I can say it as good as any campuses, you know, worldwide. But uh, outside that, you know, it's, it's a challenging because uh, some of the picture that I showed to you, you know, uh, the picture that I took, came from, uh, I think, uh, the biggest park in Thailand, the public park in Thailand. And uh, this is a very well, uh, very expensive area. But as I said, you know, it's the responsibility of the Bangkok Metropolitans. So they, they don't have enough budget to fix those areas, you know, <laughs> yeah. Interesting, okay, I have a question from the audience here. Is there from Paul Levy? Is there a way to collect images taken in Thailand from publicly available sources? I so far I could not find. Yeah, I I I, I try to search, you know, so that I don't have to take a picture. So that's why, you know, we 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 did discuss with Jr. Uh, you know, we believe that you know people if they have this app, you know, and then uh, know what we are trying to do, uh, you know, basically crowdsourcing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Take the app and then, you know, just take a picture and then shoot it up <laughs> to our server, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crowdsourcing, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know JR is working on a crowdsourcing app at the moment, so that's very interesting. Um, Another question I have is like, what are some of like, so yeah, you're talking about some of the infrastructure differences, like the streets and it not being very grid-like like it is in New York City. That's very true. Now, what about some, are there certain social differences in Thailand that have to be considered that maybe we haven't considered here in New York City when it comes to developing this technology? 
with social or cultural differences that, that have to be considered? Maybe not, maybe, you know, it's pretty- Dr. Isamara, you wanna take on this? You know, since you are the, the primary use or one of the primary users, <laughs> she's gonna help us, you know. Uh... Oh, uh, I'm not, well, I'm going to say that, well, one thing is that uh, we may have to uh, try to familiarize our uh, blind user as well, because like, okay, nowadays that we already use a smartphone, um, but we still have some belief like, you know, um, that, uh, for example, white cane that, you know, certain kind of cane cannot be used in Thailand because of our uh, pavement that is quite uh, uh, quite rough but uh and then we are not really uh used to use the technology in traveling yet so it's kind of uh, a new thing that we may have to uh, educate and try to familiarize people to try to use uh these uh, uh these devices a uh, device that uh, we are developing right now so that might be one thing that you know uh we hope that uh, people will adopt it because like, you know, more and more technology has uh, uh, influences on our day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Interesting. Are there certain ways that you um, can, certain strategies that you can use to help people adopt the technology? Hmm. That's an interesting question. <laughs> I think we have to, uh, well, we uh, have to let them try first and then let's see, like, you know, whether they like it. And then I think uh, the user uh, participation, uh, listen to their, um, their opinion will also, uh, you know, let them help them to adopt because like if you know it's too big or too heavy people is not going to carry it anyway <laughs> and then they will go to okay we have the orientation and mobility skills so why do we have to use this thing then i think uh, uh, use, uh user participation and then their uh opinion is very important and then probably will help them to adopt the technology easier and then also you know how to make it you know, more uh, like because it's wearable, right? So how to make it, you know, seems not look, uh, looks okay, you know, not weird or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that will uh, help people to adopt it easier. And also the price, of course, that as Dean Pat already uh, talked about the affordability. So that's the the uh, task for the uh, Dean Pat to find the technology that is, you know, uh, is good and is affordable, uh, affordable, yeah. Very interesting. To give it, I would like to add a little bit more about the policy. I mean, if we try to make people with visual impairment adopt technology, but as well, we have to make the policy maker to adopt this kind of technology in the benefit package in order to, to I mean, people with visual impaired access to that kind. Since most of people with disability in Thailand might not, afford, uh, might not be able to afford for the technology. Thank you. Yeah, very good points. Well, thank you so much. Let's thank our speakers again with a round of applause. We really appreciate you coming and talking to us from so far away and at a different time zone. And we, it was very fascinating for us to see this collaboration between NYU and Thailand and to see how the technology is being transferred into a new application, a new, a new environment. So thank you so much. It was fascinating. Thank you. Uh, yes. You all have a good afternoon. Yes. Yeah, thank you. That was great. Dad. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.